name is uh, Pastor Cosmas Chilando. I'm coming from Kitwe. I congregate with Victory Bible Church. Uh, the problem that brought me here was basically uh, the pain that I've been experiencing in my left leg. I've been having, experiencing things like um, numbness. Sometimes I feel like partial paralysis. Although it's not severe, you just feel coldness. Sometimes you feel uh, just like half of your body, you feel numbness. Um, this normally happens once in a while, it's not continuous. But it started way back in 2019, though I wasn't paying much attention to it. Up until um, it became severe to some extent that sometimes you would feel like you really, maybe you feel like the whole West is feeling paralyzed, but I would keep on praying with some friends of mine over time. Sometimes it would stop again to reoccur, just like that. Up until last month, I think to be specific, the first week of June, I met with a certain lady from Kito. She's a teacher there. She's a friend of mine uh, that I've known over time. We went together also to Synagogue Church of All Nations in, in Nigeria sometime back in 2015. So when she met me in the ShopRite, she said, ah, I've been, in, you've been on my heart. I've been desiring to invite you to church, to Chingola, where we've been meeting the man of God. I don't know for some reasons I've had a burden for you. So I said, wow, <clears throat> I think this meeting is divine. I would really want to come because for sure, I've been having challenges with my left leg. And not only just the left leg, I've had also issues of uh, different multiple challenges, financially, physically, and also even uh, my home as a home. Even proud to the demise of my mother who, was, who passed on last year. They've had a lot of family challenges, family troubles in terms of quarreling here and there because most of them were not comfortable with the idea that uh, um, they felt like uh, I'm just too radical in the things of God. And uh, some people felt uncomfortable. And uh, so many things happened. So when the lady said, Let's, uh, you, you are invited to come to Chingola, I said, this is the most opportune time. Perhaps it's divine. I will go. But I did not know that uh, she doesn't congregate here. She goes to another church within Chingola. So I said, I'll come. So on that particular day, when I wanted to come here, I started phoning her. She didn't pick up the phone. So. <clears throat> I just promptly decided to say I would drive, I would go to Chingola. So when I reached Chingola, <clears throat> I started checking where could be their possible area where they meet. I couldn't have, I couldn't manage. I went in town, checked around the, um, that, 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 those uh, churches that meet at one of those city, near, near the new shopping mall, those uh, uh, government schools hoping that to find them, but I couldn't find them. So, um, I felt like ah, maybe it could be that church that could be around Rulamba Road somewhere there. I think I need to go there. But how do I go there besides, I don't know whether it's the church where that lady goes. So, I just felt the strong promptings in my heart to say, you go there. So I drove, I said, I can't just drive, come to Chingola all the way without uh, having an encounter there. For sure that lady must have, uh, must have, the Lord must have spoken to her. Then again, the very day, prior to my coming here, the previous night I had a dream vision where I saw a man of God linked to Prophet T.B. Joshua's ministry, beaconing me to say, sir, you come here, you need to be prayed for. And it was like by the roadside where that church was. But I, I, I had not familiarized myself to that particular place. I said, ah, the place looks familiar, but I don't know it. So when I came physically now in Chingola and realized the person who called me 
could not pick up the phone and couldn't, couldn't find my way to where I was supposed to go. I decided to say, maybe it could be that church of age that there is a man of God who is linked to the Prophet T.B. Joshua's church. So I started driving and then I came. Then I found the place. I, I stood outside, Lord, if surely it is your spirit that directed me to this place, guide me and give me peace so that I don't end up in the wrong hands because today, nowadays, there are so many uh, uh, prophets of doom and stuff. I don't want to mess up myself. But if surely that dream I had is from you and you, you are the one who directed me, let me have my day of healing and deliverance today. Then I came in. I found people somewhere outside, others were inside, and apparently I didn't know anybody here who could have, who could direct me, the protocol where to sit and stuff, because when I walked, peeped in, I found the church was full, everyone seated on their seats, apparently there was nowhere to sit. Thank God I found people were standing in readiness to be prayed for. So that's how now the ushers now came and said, sir, come and stand here. Before long, the man of God reached where we were standing, and then they began to pray for me. So when he began to pray for me, I started shaking my leg, especially I started shaking control of breath. Then I realized, I think this is it. Then the man of God started pointing at my left leg to say, sir, where the problem is, is in your left leg. I said, yes, I can confirm that because that's, that, that's the problem I've had. I've always been experiencing. I said, don't worry. That problem will be the thing of the past. He continued praying, you leave me there, I was moving around, you go concentrate to other people. Again, he would come back until I was prayed for, complete, I started feeling okay. Then there was mass prayer, began to make declarations and stuff. Then uh, after that, the, 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 the service ended. Then I went back to Kitu. I started feeling okay. I even told my wife, you know what? When I went to Chingo, I remember that dream I was telling you that I saw a certain man of God linked to Prophet Tibshu. I found him. They say it's, <laughs> I don't know whether it's Prophet Pastor Molenga, but I found him and I was being prayed for. I think that ministry is of God. I received my healing and, oh, is that so? I said, yes, I know myself. So that's how I started feeling. The very week I was planning, I didn't want to register my name for. Uh, testimony because I didn't know the protocol and stuff. I said, I think next I will just go personally and go and testify. So, the very week I was planning to come, a certain friend of mine, a Chinese colleague who's a business, in business, contacted me to say, escort me to Mansa for business. So, we went the week I was supposed to come here because we left on the Friday. We went there up until Monday when we decided to come back, actually, Tuesday. So that Sunday I missed. So I said, okay, since I've missed this Sunday, I'll go to the other coming Sunday. So when I was coming, that problem stopped completely. I was feeling nothing I was feeling. Because what I'd been feeling, you'd feel like there's like there's a cut in between the leg, the middle of my foot. But when I was praying for everything stopped, even that numbness, yeah, it shut completely. But when I came back from Mansa, again, immediately just by Chembe Bridge, Parapa Junction, yeah, uh, by the immigration, you know, entering into Congo again. I just felt like an English foot neck in kind of a web, cob web, you know. Again, I started feeling some weird number and started. I said, mm, what could it be? You know, some stuff. So again, I came back, started having these weird dreams. Kunganda has always been like you are, you are you are in a war zone. If you can't pray because I've just made it to say no, Akuna Kolara, whatever it is, I will pray. Even if it means somebody has declared no, I'll be numb, nothing, it can never happen. I was prayed for. And that healing and that healing should be permanent. But yeah, you know how the enemy wants to program your mind to think like it hasn't happened. But I continue trusting God, praying the another man of God I always pray with my prayer partner. So, last week, that week I planned to come, I couldn't manage because of some works. Last week again, I purposed that I will come and pray here. 
But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't manage because I didn't have enough fuel. When I, I even started off coming, on the way, I said, this fuel I have may not be enough to take me to Chingola and back. Let me just wait until next time. That was the time, I'm telling you, I think I made the grievous mistake. Now, I was attacked beyond. In the night, I felt like, now, Chapa, no, but my, my half of my body, I felt like, you want to say, Chapa, now, everything, I said, no, no, it's the devil a liar. You cannot hold me at the hostage and stuff. So I will go. So I started praying, 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 praying until I felt much better. I said, ah. Today I was telling my wife to say, I think I'm not going to church to Victory Bible Church today. I'm going to Chingola. Though I didn't mention to where I just said, I need to see someone. I'm going to Chingola. You know, women sometimes are talking, ah, to Chingola. I said, yes. So that's how I just went and dropped the, ch the kids at church and started coming. So when I arrived, again, the same way it happened, I arrived at the time when there was prayer again. And the, the usher just came to say, sir, start going in front, go and sit. It was like uh, those people they were taking, telling to go in front, those I think they had already been prayed for. So then I realized, ah, no, sir, I haven't been prayed for. I think these people here, let me stand there. Oh, you haven't been prayed for? I said, yes. Then they said, come and stand in the queue again. That's how they they made they made me stand again in the prayer line, the first line. The man of God before long again began to pray. Same experience. I started shaking in my leg. In my heart, I said, "Aha, you are in trouble, devil! You are in trouble because you thought you are going to escape." Because I prayed, I prayed, the Lord, whatever has been buffeting my leg or whatever has been troubling me, whether it's in my blood, whatever it is, inshallah, whatever it is, me, I'm going free. Because there is no way my body should be a temple of demons, whatever it may be. There is no way I can be halfway good and halfway something. Whatever has been buffeting my leg has to remain here. Then the man of God looked at me and, he laughed and smiled. He said, ah, what is happening? He said, man of God here. Then he began to pray. Lord, we cry, restore our altars again. Yeah, we cry, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, restore our love for you again. Restore, 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 restore. Restore, 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 restore. I felt, because even when I was coming, my, my, my shoulder was paining. Literally half of my body. I could feel now half of myself like bad. Even the dream encounters I always have, even what I had was something funny. You dream like in my family foundation, my family, the past, my village, stuff, it's just like that. But I know the, how the enemy operates, I say, no ways. But respecting the grace, I said, I will go so that eh, I can tap in the grace and the Lord can heal me completely. That's how I found myself here. And I trust the Lord that my healing and deliverance, I know it's permanent. I know I regret that I could not come on time to testify what the Lord did for me and what he's doing for me. Just want to thank the Lord and appreciate the grace upon the servant of God for ministering deliverance and healing to me. And I know this time is permanent. I know the enemy will try and create some situation to look like it's not something, but I won't budge. I know that my healing is permanent. Being a pastor, being a gifted person of God does not mean God, the devil cannot attack you. My word for them is that the devil is not a respect of persons. He can attack any man. He doesn't respect the anointing. He only respects the word. But at the same time, God has given us different graces. You have to respect and honor the grace I remember the words of the servant of God, the late prophet T.B. I would say, I am because you are. You are because I am. 
He may not put everything in me. What the answer that I have could be in you, it could be in the servant of God, Pastor Molenga, or anybody. But what I need to do is to submit in order for me to tap in the grace for my healing and deliverance. So it's not about the title, it's about honoring God's grace. Because all the graces are from God. So that's what I can say. And uh, they say you do not respect, the, the, the prophet is not uh, respected in his own household. So I know there could be some complacency by some members of the church thinking, ah, after all, Pastor Mulinga, whoever it is, to Sangonavena, Jones and stuff, they are missing out on the grace upon the servant of God. They need to embrace and respect because they say the, the, the grace that you honor is what will uh, uh, give you result and stuff. So that's what I can encourage the members of the church and the clergy as a whole. We're supposed to be brothers, keepers, and uh, exhort one another. Where there is need to be praised, exhort it because it is of God. Amen.